Hey guys, Johnny K here. Today we're going to talk about the cylinder head. What we're going to do today is take off the valve springs. All right. So I got this handy dandy tool from Summit. It's just a valve spring compressor. It's a universal one. One side fits the 716 studs on the big block. The other side is for the Chevy small block. So you got one side, you got the other side. And basically you just take off this little E-clip and uh, pull the pin out and you can flip this around and use it on your small block Chevy. And remember, before you start taking anything apart, get your bag and tag it. So. I just put both valves in here, the valve spring, the retainer, the locks. I throw it all in here, any shims. So just thread this dude on. You only got one set of eyeballs, so wear your safety glasses. If the spring shoots out, hits you in the eyeball, you're done. So wear your safety glasses. These are the valve locks. Something I wanted to show you. When you come down on this tool, if the locks aren't fully exposed, what you can do Come off the tool, raise it up, and you can spin this down. And you just run your little lock nut down, and try it again. Okay, see, now your locks are fully exposed and they come right off, no problem. We're just going to pull out the valve spring shim you got one shim here and notice one side serrated that side always goes down okay the other side is smooth serrated side goes down What I like to do, I like to clean off the carbon deposit. I just use a bench grinder with a, this wheel is very fine. It does, it's not brittle, it doesn't dig in. It's just enough to clean the carbon off. Next thing you want to do, get your notebook and pen, get your digital caliper, and we're going to measure this diameter of the valve spring pocket. So you measure it, swing it around a little bit, find out the widest points. Okay, 1.551 is what I got. You write that down, okay? Where your valve spring sits into your pocket, you want about five thousandths of clearance, 0 .005, okay? That lets the valve spring move around a little bit and doesn't bind up. If she's too loose in there, she'll dance around on you and you don't want that. So anyway, uh, measure that and write that down. The next measurement we're going to take is the valve spring height. I'll take this little valve spring micrometer and we're going to check the height. Okay, so all what you do, you put your valve spring micrometer there, you take your little retainer, you throw that sucker on there, and then you take your locks and you put your locks on there. I like to raise up the retainer a little bit. It helps to get my locks in there a lot easier. Okay, now that my locks are on, I'll just take this and spin it down. OK, 
okay? You go and spin it down till it gets tight. It's not a C-clamp. You don't want to reef, reef on it super hard. And uh, you just take your reading. So this says, this is a one to two inch mic and they make different valve spring mics so you gotta get one that's designed this is for the big block chevy so i knew i needed a one to a two inch for my particular application so it's one for one inch one point we're at nine the hash mark going this way is nine so that's 1.9 and here's 10 here's 15 looks like eh, about 12 okay so that's 1.912 and you write that number down now you have the valve spring height okay so here's some options when you get your cam and your valve springs that are matched to that cam your valve springs might not come out to this height So here's some options what you can play with. They offer shims, so if you have a real short valve spring and you need to get to a certain height, they come in and you throw shims under there and that gets you to the right height. Now. You can also get a different lock. So say if I needed, I'm stuck right here where I'm at, that's max height, but I need to go up some. They make locks that are 50 thousandths. So I could get a plus 50 thousandths lock, which is going to make this whole thing grow 50 thousandths up. They also make minus 50 thousandths, which will make the whole thing go down. So those are just some of the options you can do without necessarily having your seat pocket machine. Uh, Lenati says that as long as you're within plus or minus 20 thousandths of their recommended spring height, that's cool, awesome, you're good to go. Basically what you do, you put your retainer on, put on your valve locks, okay? And then you want to measure from the bottom of your retainer to the top of the valve stem seal. Now, once you get this measurement, write it down. Then you look at your cam card and you look at the maximum lift. This dimension is greater than my max lift, so I'm cool. So these are my new valve springs. One thing I want to point out to you is 
don't get discouraged if you try a valve spring and you put it in like this one and it's snug as in you can't get a feeler gauge in there there's not five thousandths of play if you can't just spin it real easy that that's no good but you take another valve spring the same all the same box try it look at that I got all types of slop in there okay that's moving so try these valve springs in different locations not all the valve springs are identical sizes they might be a half thousandths a thousandths off okay so just try the valve springs in different locations so don't get give up right away and throw your valve spring <laughs> just try it in different areas and it's bound to work that's the valve spring tip of the day so go ahead and finish removing your valve springs take all your measurements bag and tag everything that your valve springs are off your valves are out the shims are out and you're left with a bare head go ahead and grab your thread chasers and go ahead and clean all the holes so you got the intake manifold bolts the exhaust manifold bolts and the valve cover bolts clean all, all those bolt holes then once you chased all the threads then go ahead and take that little wire brush put it into your electric drill motor and go ahead and just wire brush the holes out and uh, then take some air blow it all out and you're good to go that's right. pretty much the cylinder head how to take off the valve springs how to get the correct measurements so you know when you go to order your cam and you know what it's going to come with this valve spring kit works with this cam you can go ahead and go hey Mr. Lenati uh, these are my clearances and my tolerances on my head is there another spring that would work better with my head that would still be compatible with that camshaft that'll save you a lot of headache and a lot of messing around trying to get your spring to work with your head. place a rag under the valve just to keep the valve up when I'm uh, installing the uh, valve locks. Then I'll take some assembly lube and I'll goop it on the valve lock valve retaining lock or keeper as some like to call it and it just sticks by itself you don't have to worry about it falling off put some on the other one kind of goop it on there okay now that's holding in place just come off the valve spring compressor tool. Bam, there it is. Take a rubber mallet and just uh, give it a tap, and that helps to seat the locks. The valve springs are on. I took the rubber mallet, I gave each valve spring a light tap. I just wipe off the excess assembly lube, and then what I do, I actually come back and I put some assembly grease on it. I just like the Joel Gibbs assembly grease and uh, I just put a little squirt on each one. Smooth it around a little bit. Grab some ARP, Ultra Torque, and I'll apply that to the threads of the for the rocker studs. Just put a little on, just thin to the wind. We can go ahead and put the head back on the car.